Okay, um, I still stand by. I'm glad I saw the Bollywood movie this weekend first before the scary movie. <laughs> um, that's not often you hear me say that, but anyway, um, here's my late, this is kind of late review for uh, The Nun 2. Um, I would have, any other week I would have saw this, like, opening night. Um, I was just, I've just been kind of busy with other projects, so, um, anyway, getting into it. Um, obviously this is the sequel, um, and latest addition to the Conjuring franchise and universe. Um, they're still keeping this going because this franchise er still earns, like, a lot of money. Um, and there's still, I guarantee there's going to be more, more spinoffs, uh, coming forth. Um, there's, there's supposed to be a movie about the Crooked Man from Conjuring 2, um, it, it's just never, I have never heard anything about it or anything, obviously they can't write it right now because of the, uh, the strikes, but, um, I don't know if there's a script actually written or if they've just been planning on writing one, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but it, it'd be interesting to see, um, but, um, this is the sequel to The First Nun, which, I think most people can agree is it's it's tied with the first Annabelle movie as the as the worst movie in the Conjuring franchise. Um, I personally would say Annabelle's slightly worse than the first Nun movie, but uh, the Nun's not good. Um, it, it was very messy. Um, the plot and story were not very engaging, um, and it felt just like an excuse to uh, do a bunch of jump scares and do. Uh, a lot of stuff you've seen, in, but done better in other horror movies, including uh, a, a few of the Conjuring movies. Um, so, but I was at least a little bit hopeful that the sequel, um, because this happened with uh, the Annabelle movies, because the first one was awful, and but the second one, uh, which did something different, in, in which case Annabelle Creation was a prequel, um, that worked out a lot better. Um, and a Annabelle Creation, I think, is one of the best movies in this franchise. Um, um, and I even like Annabelle Comes Home. I, I like that movie. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, this movie, uh, The Nun 2, did have a chance of redeeming, you know, a bit of like the ill will from the first movie in um, the spinoff series. And I think um, for the most part, I think this movie does do is, I think most people will agree with this movie that this is a lot better than the first movie. Um, I think there's a lot more effort when it comes to the characters and the story there. <clears throat> there's definitely a lot more character development um, than there was in the first movie. Cause you really, you really, the characters were really fucking boring in the first one, and you really, you didn't really care about them, and it was such a, usually this is a good thing, but the cast was so small, it was like three people, um, two of them actually come back in this movie, in, uh, The Nun 2, and that's, uh, Tysa Farmiga, and, um, I don't know the, I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy who plays, uh, Maurice from the first one, he, he comes back in this one, and he's a pretty major part of the movie, um, which actually, actually, even though I didn't really know much about, um, the character in the first one, I, I did, I did like him, um, and they definitely do a lot more with him in this movie, uh, which is a good thing, so, um, I won't spoil too much of the plot, because I don't think the trailers gave away that much, um, so I definitely don't want to go into details, but the nun, the, the, the demon nun named, known as Valak, um, is not, even though you thought the, the demon was defeated in the first movie, which was defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ, which is a little, which is a little fucking much, um, but, uh, the demon, of course, is not actually dead, and it has, is continued to, um, create death and chaos all throughout the, in all these, uh, different countries across Europe. Um, it's targeting, you know, churches and targeting priests and, um, all these religious people. And, um, it, 
uh, of course, Tysa Formiga, who is um, Sister Irene in this movie, um, she's one of the the more prominent uh, people in this uh, this church slash orphanage. I I'm not very relig I'm not too religious, so I I don't know what the actual term is for that. But it is an orphanage. They have a school for uh, a bunch of these uh, little girls, and uh, it's it's basically. Um, uh, a, 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 sorry. <laughs> um, so anyway, the nun, uh, is targeting, uh, this, it's targeting this specific place and, um, it's, uh, it's got the attention of Sister Irene and of course they had to find a way, uh, to stop it once and for all. So, um, and there, I don't want to get into why, uh, definitely don't want to get into why the demon wasn't defeated because that's a pretty major um that's a pretty major plot point in the movie but i don't think the trailers really uh you know gave it away they were pretty secretive so i'll i'll leave it at that so <clears throat> like i said the the character development is is more pronounced in in the sequel compared to the first one um you do care a, a lot more about the characters in this one um and there and the cast is pretty is much bigger in this one and there's um surprisingly with more characters you got more development which is not usually the case usually it's the opposite um but you get more relationships with uh you you know more about the relationships we, between all the characters you know um Maurice has <clears throat> uh a nice nice relationship with one of the kids uh one of the little girls in the movie um sister irene has a has a little bit of good back and forth between uh, uh storm reed's character which i wish we got more of because it the movie doesn't really go into it that much and i think that is a detriment because that character did did seem interesting but i don't think the movie really had much time to go into it i think they they should have um and tied it more into uh the story but um there's there's you do care more about the people uh in danger in this one and you do get more of the threat that the that the nun causes uh <clears throat> and uh the change in director i think was was a good choice um michael chavez who's directed two uh three of these movies now he did um, the Curse of La Llorona, which I did not see, but I did not hear was very good. Um, then The Conjuring of the Devil made me do it, the third one. Um, I think if I was to, I, if I was to say, in my opinion, um, I think he has, sh excuse me, um, soda. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've actually drank, uh, drank, uh, soda, not sweet tea. Um, I think um, Michael Chavez has gotten a little bit better across the three movies in, you know, his directing skills. Um, Conjuring Made Me Do It was not, wasn't the best in the three Conjuring movies. Uh, it was definitely the worst. Um, but it did have some interesting things going on. Um, and I think that he's, he's actually done, he did a better job in this one too. So I, it's a it's a strange thing that he's the one that's directed um, probably the most movies in the franchise um more than you know James Wan at this point and I don't know if James Wan is ever going to come back to this franchise I wish he would because he he did the the two best movies in uh the series um but Michael Chavez I I don't think he deserves the bad rap that he's that he's gotten over, um, the Conjuring movies that he's done. I think he, he's get, he's growing more. And I think, um, I think we should allow directors to, you know, stumble at first, but then grow their directing skills. I, that, that's happened a few times. And I think directors sh should be allowed to fail at least a few times. Um, it's, it's weird that, um, one thing I find very strange in this current landscape of movie discussion is that whenever a director, you know, stumbles now, it is like a death sentence on their, like, in terms of their reputation. Um, back then, it, it was not like that at all, if that I remember. Um, I mean, remember, like, the, the almost decade-long 
shit streak that M. Night Shyamalan had until he kind of had a few good movies uh, recently. You know, it. I mean, are we, do we not live in that time anymore? <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's just kind of strange to me that we, directors that have recognizable names or work on these bigger projects, um, bigger relatively, relative, relatively, um, but The Conjuring is, I do consider, is a huge uh, blockbuster franchise, and um, I, I just find it strange that directors aren't allowed to fail on these movies. Um, I just... I, I don't know. That's happened with a few people, you know, from Ryan Johnson to Taika Waititi to Patty Jenkins, you know, it's a common thing right now. And I just don't, I don't see that as a good thing, um, that we have to lab label directors if they have one or two bad movies. Um, I mean, Ryan Johnson has come back twice now with the Knives Out movies. So it's, it's, it should not be, it should not be a long-term thing. Is what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I think the scare, the scares in the movie are decent. They're definitely not the most standout ones for for this franchise uh, that still drew, uh, belongs to James Wan. And um, I'd also uh, throw David F. Sandberg for Annabelle Creation. I think those tr two directors, I think, put a lot of effort into building um, memorable scare sequences in ways that are not the predictable uh, formula. Um, Michael Chavez, I think that is his de detriment. Um, his scares do come off sometimes very formulaic. Um, but, and there's a few jump scares in the movie, not many, um, but there's a few sequences where a jump scare is thrown in there. And it feels very like, it's it's almost like the filmmaker is waving their keys to the audience like to see are you paying attention are you paying attention um there's one sequence where uh a character's you know passed out or knocked out um and they may potentially get possessed and hurt someone and then in the background a bird flies by and it goes Caw! and then it nothing huge happens in the rest of that shot and it's like why'd you put that there? <laughs> it, it didn't really make any sense for that one jump scare to be in that one scene. Um, it, it just felt like, it just felt very, um, it felt very garish and unnecessary. And there's a few scenes like that in the, in the film where the jump scares do, um, they, they take away more than like they, they provide for the, for the scares. Um, but the visually, I think the movie, is definitely a lot better than the first one. The first one was just kind of, it was very, um, it just felt very rushed in the visual aspect. Um, this one definitely felt like there was more, there was more going on. Uh, there was some very unique and creative visuals, um, especially with, with the nun herself. Um, and there's a good, there's good use of, uh, background, there's good use of background and stuff that's hidden in the shadows until it's reveal until it's fully revealed. Um, I, I like that stuff where stuff is, you can kind of see it in the background, but you can't really make it out until, you know, the scene requires them to be fully seen. Um, and that, I think that that's a good thing, uh, when it comes to the scares in the film. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, I'd also say that, um, I'd also say that the um, the acting in this film is a lot better. Uh, I think Tysa Formiga, despite how distracting it is that sh how much she looks like her older sister, and that they're I don't know if they're ever those two characters are ever gonna have some sort of connection. Um, Lorraine Warren and Sister Irene, I feel like they have to in some way make have some sort of connection. Um, aside from the actors being looking strike distractingly similar because of their sisters in real life. <laughs> I just think they have to connect it at some point in either the conjuring four or the nun three, if they ever do it. So I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think the acting is pretty good for the most part. Storm Reed, I think is, is very good. Um, I've always liked Storm Reed. Um, and yeah, I'd, so definitely, I would say 
the the nun 2 is a superior a superior sequel to the first one um it's it's still not nearly the level of something like the conjuring 2 or the first conjuring or even annabelle creation um it's i'd say it's middle of the road when it comes to the franchise um i'd say it, it's better it's definitely better than annabelle 1 and the nun um i'd say I'd still put it behind Annabelle Comes Home um, and Annabelle Creation and definitely the first two. Um, I'd say this, mo this movie is on par with uh, The Conjuring 3. Um, it, it, I think they both have similar strengths and weaknesses, but um, I, I do think that uh, Michael Chavez, in some aspects, did get better um, with his filmmaking uh, than he did from the third conjuring. Um, and I'm, I'm interested because I don't know if he's actually doing the conjuring four. I guess he would be at this point. Um, I don't know if James Wan is going to come back to do it or someone new is going to come in. I don't know. Um, definitely conjuring four, I think is the next one in the franchise. Well, so, um, we'll see where that goes. Um, I, I'm curious to see what real life case is going to be tackled with the fourth conjuring because I, you know the this obviously the spin-offs are not based on true stories but um the uh the the three conjuring movies we've gotten so far are based on real life cases but obviously completely you know exaggerated in a lot of cases for hollywood um for hollywood's sake uh, so I'll be interested to see where that goes. And the, the post credit scene definitely hints at something big coming for, um, I, I guess there is going to be finally a connection between the nun storyline and the, the conjure the main conjuring, uh, timeline. So I think that should be kind of cool to see. So anyway, I'm going to give uh, The Nun 2 a 6.5 out of 10. Not great by any means. I don't think you have to rush out to see it. But if, if you are a fan of the um, the Conjuring franchise, and if you've, stick, if you've stuck with it this long um, and you've seen most of them, I think you've already seen this. Um, so yeah, what did you guys think of The Nun 2? Um, did you think it was better than the first Nun? Um, or do you think it was worse? Uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, look out for more.